the first thing I'd like to cover is where I store my kayak. And how I bring it down to these tables to work on it. First, I use the car top carriers that I put on the roof of the car when I'm not using them and just set them here on the tables. Then I pull the strap down and there's a little L bracket tied to a string. And when I pull on that, it releases the strap so I can lower the front. Then I'll come over here and do the same thing. Pull on the strap and lower the back all the way down till it's about a foot off of these tables. So here it is, about halfway down. Grab a good handle on the strap. When I did that, it lowered the bottom and I'll be able to get it almost a foot off that, those tables, so that I can use the handles and pull the straps out from the front and the back. And I have a bungee cord on this side holding the straps together so one end doesn't slip out when I'm lowering it down. Okay, now that the kayak is about a foot off of the tables, I can grab this handle or I can grab this attachment and pull the straps out and just set it down onto the car top carrier. There's the back end sitting on the carrier and the front end. Let's see if I can do this with a camera in my hand. Lift up on the handle, pull the strap, set it down. It's that easy. Now I'll pull these straps back up so that they're out of my way when I'm working on the kayak. Okay, now the straps are up and out of the way. Plenty of room for me to work on the kayak. Today I'm not going to be working on the kayak because it's pretty much done. As you can see, I've installed a anchor trolley. With a simple ring, bungee cords, the top part of it goes through these pad eyes, and the back is also attached to a pad eye. So in this way, when I pull on this, I can transfer the anchor point to the front or to the back by just pulling on this rope from the seat. The second thing I'd like to show you is the new seat. 
that looks familiar to you, it once was just a boat cushion that is certified as a flotation, personal flotation, flotation device. There's the brand name. And inside there are about eight half inch sheets, maybe a little less in thickness, of poly foam. And uh, the poly foam was taken out of the front. I, I opened the seam up, took it out, and then carved the pieces. Let's see if I could turn this over to. Here's the first sheet, then the second sheet, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And it's kind of curved now so that it fits in the area where the seat goes. It doesn't want to, it won't pop up or shift around as much because now it's sitting right in a spot where it's supposed to go. And then the front part, instead of being square here, it's now curved. I haven't used this yet. I just got it back. I had to have someone with a sewing machine uh, take this, and this was hand stitched. And uh, once I got the poly sheets cut, I used contact cement between them to hold them in position so that they don't shift around. But the way this is upholstered together, it probably wouldn't do a lot of shifting. This bottom piece might might slide back. But it's it's cut, it's been formed to fit in that. And I'm using one of the straps through the center part of this seat that comes with this kayak. And it comes out the back, there's a strap. And I have this ball bungee uh, attached to another ball bungee. And I'm just using the, the hook eye, the hooks here that were on the kayak that, uh, that this would attach to, to hold down your, this came with the kayak as well. I have the same system on the other side. And that holds the seat now from sliding forward. Okay, the third thing I'd like to show you is my system for my pontoons. This is all PVC fittings. An elbow. A male and female adapter, some holes drilled, which I'll show you how I use that later. Another elbow, another fitting. This holds it down. Another elbow fitting. And then these rotate the pontoons for flotation up and down, and this piece attaches the pontoon on there. Okay, these are the pontoons. Here's one piece. And the piece on the end fits up against that, and that, and that sleeve comes down and, and holds the two of these together. So it's adjustable on this axis, but when that's tightened, it stays in place. So now I have put this together using that fitting. And you can see there's, this is half inch PVC, that's a T fitting. That goes all the way through that buoy, which is a crab buoy. 
and I've capped it on the end. This one still rotates, but this one, it had a tighter uh, center. I remember having to push that uh, half-inch PVC through with a little pressure, so it's, it's not rotating. It doesn't matter if it rotates or not. And if, it, if you didn't want it to rotate, you could glue it, I'm sure. So now, see the angle at which this is in. So if it hit the water, it would, it would just, it would just come up. But what, what we do is you take that cotter pin and put it into the hole that you've drilled to hold it in place. Now I've installed the other side flotation and I have locked it in the upright position, which you can put these in when you're paddling along and you don't feel like you need them. So either down is on the right side or up is on the left side. And there they are in the down position. The other thing I have done recently is installed a bungee to hold my paddle, which can set in this molded indent here on this side. And all that is are these, these ends, this bungee cord, uh, th this is two pieces. There's a sleeve here that you put on the cord first, slip the cord into, into this piece here. You can see it coming out the end a little bit. And then this piece also has a hole for the screw. And then you slip that sleeve over that and it locks it into place. And it just sets there until you need it. Let's see, other modifications on here is I will be showing you my storage box that sets up in this area. And this is the front tie-down spot, and this is the back tie-down spot. This is the old back tie-down spot, which doesn't keep it stable enough, so I just turn those down. And then up here are a couple of fittings. There's a screw that goes through these two pieces. And these are like little uh, things you can put on the bottom of furniture to keep them to make them slide. And they have a piece of double stick tape attached to them. So I just use that double stick tape, put them together, bottom to bottom, top to top, and then put them in and that's what holds that box it sits in that groove there that goes up here and I'll show you that in a minute. The other modification that we have is this PVC that's been attached to the boat using galvanized metal female fitting or male fitting, 90 degree elbow, another 90 degree elbow, and a third one. And you have a male and female fitting. And you have a cross piece. Then you have a male and female fitting. And then that goes to a T. And you have this fitting. And that goes to a 90 degree, another 90 degree, and then into a male fitting and back into the galvanized pipe.
when I'm storing my kayak, I put all my accessories, they fit in this box. Right there. So, I have a, a rod holder. And this is a modified paddle. This pin comes out and the paddle fits up in here and the pin holds it in place. And that is my rudder. Of course, it's fixed. It doesn't turn, so it won't steer the boat. But it does when it's in the down position. Because it hangs below the boat, it aids in tracking that boat when you're paddling. So your front end isn't going to the left when you paddle to the right, or to the right when you paddle to the left. Otherwise, you're doing this the whole time. This allows you to paddle on a straight, straight line. Okay, this is my storage box. It is now empty, and I'm ready to install it onto the kayak. So, I will close it. I'm gonna leave this open because it's hard to reach when you're sitting in the kayak. And I'm gonna close this one. Just pick it up. And as you can see, the front of this will set right there. That keeps it from going forward. And the back of this will be installed on this. And I'll show you how that looks when you put it together. Actually, this part screws onto that. And I'll move this. And now I have two scupper holes for this device. fits down in between these grooves and sits up. So now I have my two attachment points for the for the box here and here. On the bottom of the box I have screwed on this attachment what will hold that box up above the deck. So. That sits there. And that sits there. Now, I use these bungee cords. To that point. And the same on the other side. And the front bungee cords. To that point. And to that point. When I'm installing these bungee cords to tie this down, I put the front, the back one, the one facing the seat, on first, and that'll push this up to here. So 
if I was installing these back ones, it might push it off that uh, stand that it's on. So now we have this, this box securely mounted to the front of the kayak. What the other thing I do is I just pull this down here and this down here, which gives me a little extra room for my feet if they're in this forward position or up here. When I was first doing this, I didn't know if my feet would fit in one of these slots. So, just to show you, that's the one I paddle in the most. And my leg comes out here, so it's not hitting this. And I can even, well, in this lower position, since I lowered this down a little bit, I don't know if I'll be able to get to the front one, but I don't need it that often. In fact, I really don't need it at all just to stretch out. And if I do that, I just put my feet up on the side here. So this box can be used to store stuff while you're on the water, bait, tackle, uh, jacket. I have mounted a, a rod holder on the side wall here. Just set it in and you turn it forward and push it down. And then this is adjustable up and down and it locks it in. So this here is an indentation where you can put your uh, paddle when you're not using it. And I can just pull this bungee cord up and secure that in place. On the front here is another galvanized attachment. And this is a PVC. That goes in here. This would be if I was wanting to be out on the lake after dark. Turn that to a vertical position. And I have attached a female fitting onto this. It's an LED light that has two pieces of plastic that the light shines through to make that a navigation light for the front. And you just on and when you want to be on the water before you get in the water or you get out of the water you turn this on then you've got your front navigation light for the rear we have a similar situation just a longer pole take the cap off drop it in the water <laughs> and this pole goes on the same way you've got a female fitting going over a male fitting. And at the top you have a male fitting. And 
Here's the same LED light. A, this is 360. This has this little uh, slider on it. I can direct the light to the front, which is how we have that front one set up. See, that can come down, but we don't want that down in the front. But we do want it down in the back because you want a 360. And then that's attached. So I have opened this LED light. That's a battery compartment right there to show you that I just attached that fitting on with four screws. And then that slips in here and snaps into place. And you can attach your light. So there's the light attached and turn it on and you have a rear navigation light that's higher than your head and can be seen in 360 degrees. That's the only light that's required on a boat this size. Before I show you how I set up the back of this, I want to show you a couple of things here. This is the cup holder that comes with molded into the kayak and it's fairly big and if you have a big drink it'll fit in there nicely if you have a can uh, of soda you might want something to snug that up a little bit and all of all this is is the top of one of those butt can ashtrays that you put in your car and i've cut out the center part which is the funnel and the butt goes down into that funnel hole that's been cut out and that can be put in there snugly. Just push it down and it's not going to go anywhere. Or if you don't need it, take it out, put it in your box. But it makes things more convenient and catch a fish. You really don't want your soda to spill. The other thing are these cords here that I've made as lash cords. And all they are is that same bungee cord that's used here. And a carabiner, which I can attach. To the seat like that. Let's see if I can get one of these untangled. And my attachment points to close the loop. It's just a zip tie and a Velcro. And this is one of the smaller ones, which I can use to lash fishing pole. It's, a, it's about 36 inches. So if the fishing pole falls out of the boat, it's still attached to the boat. And it gives me enough room to use a fishing pole in all directions without stretching the cord. And I have three of those for another rod and a larger Velcro for my paddle. So all of that can be leashed with these cords. When you're putting your boat away, just with one hand, <laughs> take the car car carabiner off and come on.
these. If you don't want to use them, eh, just put them away. That latch is easily reached from the front of the boat. So is the deck here that uh, holds the rod holder. There's room on this side to put a second one. And now to the back of the boat. Well, the first thing I did is there's these molded uh, pieces that hold the strap for the seat. And I've just taken a bungee cord. And let's see where is this comes in. So this bungee cord, as you can see, is hooked here. And this one's hooked here. When the seat's up, this cord stretches and closes so you can tie your seat to these hooks here. So. That keeps the seat from flopping down when you get in and out. And this I use for this soft cooler, which is also is being used not as a cooler, but as a soft tackle box. And it's nice. It's got some pockets, zipper pockets, some side pockets, and you can reach it from the back of the cooler. From the back of this, from the seat, you can reach it. And let's close it back up. And that fits nicely behind this, and that fits nicely behind the seat. And if you want to secure it, you just put that bungee cord over it. And it's tied down. The next thing that goes on here, I just uh, flip this up for a minute, is this modified cooler. It's got a couple of rod holders on it. Fits in this section really nice. And all I have to do to secure it is bring this over and attach it here. Attach it on this side. That is down. These scupper holes here, I'll show you what I use that for. Scupper holes, this, these wheels fit right down in those scupper holes for storage when you're on the water. And you really don't need to tie this down because these wheels will hold that in. But, to be on the safe side, there you are. Need a drink? Pull off the water or reach back if this is undone. And 
open your cooler up and you're ready to go here's how those uh, those are screws are too long those bolts to hold these on here and I had positioned them in the wrong place but I just filled that up with expandable foam and uh, put your drinks in there and uh, if you're like me you don't want your beer to go anyplace so secure that down And there's the back back end of your kayak fishing. You've got your floats, pontoon stabilizers, you've got your skeg, navigation light, cooler, your, your wheels for your kayak to get it down to the water your tackle box, your seat, a cushion, and your storage box. It's pretty much ready to go in the water now. Uh, you have a anchor, fishing poles, and you have a dry box. That can either be out here or inside your your storage box and your anchor okay to finish up this video, I'd like to kind of tell you how much something like this would cost to build brand new. The kayak, it's an 8-footer, it's a Emotion Spitfire 8-footer, and that was two and a quarter. This box is about $25 at Walmart, and it comes with these detachable boxes that you can use for bait and tackle up here or whatever you need and it's not going to fall off. You've probably got 10 to 20 dollars in bungee cords all used all the way through for you know tying things down. These uh, pontoons, these uh, crab buoys are about nine or ten dollars each. The cushion's about $10. Uh, this is about $10. A cooler, I think that's $12. These are all things you can find at Walmart. These uh, rod holders, I think there was three of them in a package for $10. Uh, the paddle that makes this, $10. Your, your, uh, your paddle for the kayak, those can go anywhere from $20 to $100. Uh, I think I spent $20, $30 on mine. Navigation lights, I think they're five, six dollars or so at Walmart. Uh, your anchor. and buoy uh, I would say ten dollars for the anchor itself and five dollars three dollars for that that buoy and we've got some rope um, I think those were five six dollars a piece uh, the rod holders um, inside, if you want a dry box for your uh, fishing license and paperwork, uh, 
that's another ten dollars so I think you could put something together like this uh, you'll need the a, a car top carrier of some sort or throw it in your pickup truck or whatever if you have a car you'll need a car top carrier and then the only other money was some tie down straps some eye hooks um, a couple of L brackets this cart now you, you can build one of these um, you might be able to build one out of PVC piece of metal a rod a couple of five dollar tires if you're gonna buy one built they can run you around fifty sixty dollars um, so there you have it the story behind the little red bottom bass yak of course you're gonna to have to invest in some PVC you know PVC is what um, all of these uh, pieces are put together with um, this is all PVC and PVC fittings so you might have another 30 or 40 dollars in PVC fittings galvanized metal uh, brackets like this and you have to get your fishing license and uh, You know the pad eyes and the and the hooks and everything. You can buy a package of assorted uh, uh, pad eyes and hooks like that. And uh, the uh, it comes in a package. These these ends. Um, I think I think you'd do better uh, instead of using this kind of bungee cord with these uh, smaller. Uh, that's probably a quarter inch uh, bungee, but something a little a little thinner than that might work in these. I had to use tape and push it together and then put it through there uh, so it came out. Uh, it's a really tight fit. I mean, that's secure, but you're going to uh, need some tie-downs hooks. Uh, back here, I, I just used the hooks that were uh, already on the kayak. And all they do, all you do is you drill a hole for these screws. So that's all they did here. There's no sealer or anything. Um, as long as you don't strip the, the hole, uh, these things are all just screwed in here. The way that this was screwed, I put a... Uh, I did this a little different. Instead of just using regular uh, screws in here, I put an anchor bolt, basically, system in here so that that's on tighter. So there you have it. The Little Red Bottom Bass Yak from Lake Fork, ready to go. It's a nice evening. Maybe I'll take her out tonight, try out the navigation lights. Maybe I'll wait till next weekend. We'll see. But thanks for watching.